Well, good evening, everyone. It is Thursday evening. It's uh, about 5.30 here on Thursday and wanted to get on, take a look at some of the latest weather model data. Um, looks like we could have yet again another round of severe weather expected here on Friday afternoon and evening across much of the same areas that saw severe weather yesterday. So North Texas, all the way down into Central Texas, and then it, probably evening into the overnight hours across East Texas as well. So could see all modes of severe weather possible, um, certainly a chance of some significant, maybe you know, baseball, softball size hail yet again, damaging winds, and even a, a couple tornadoes can't be ruled out either. Uh, I think the main threat is likely going to be that large destructive hail like we've seen over the last uh, week or so, a couple different rounds here in Texas. So want to take a look at kind of where the timing and what areas may be under the gun for that severe weather tomorrow. So first thing I always like to do is look at the Storm Prediction Center, their day two outlook for Friday. Um, and so what we can see here is another three out of five enhanced risk across much of North and Central Texas along that I-35 corridor from the Red River through Dallas-Fort Worth, down south of Waco, somewhere between about Austin and Waco, maybe that kind of Colleen, Texas area. And then we've got this large slight risk outlined for much of North, Central, all of South Texas, and even a lot of East Texas as well. So likely going to be a pretty active day. When we look at the main threats, we do have a 5% tornado risk outline here, 2% for this entire area, but it looks like the tornado threat will be maximized here across north and north central Texas. Um, again, an isolated threat, doesn't look like any type of an outbreak, but could see a couple tornadoes uh, being reported here tomorrow. Um, again, main threat is going to be hail. We've got our 30% hatched area here in red, 15% hatched um, in this area here in yellow. So again, significant hail threat with some of these storms, especially initially with the more isolated, stronger cells, really kind of all along this dry line from the Mexico border, um, kind of Del Rio, Laredo area, all the way up to the Red River. So definitely hail looks to be the biggest threat. Now let's take a look at some of the latest data. This gives us an idea again of those dew point temperatures. This starts us at 18Z Friday. So again, this would be 1 p.m. Central Time. And what we can see here is that we've got a pretty good pool of moisture, you know, 70 degree dew points here off the coast or even in South Texas, but then even some low to mid 60s dew points all the way up into the Metroplex here. And as we see with a little bit of movement here, if we go back, this moisture is going to be pulled forward pretty significantly with this cold front that's gonna be pushing down. So we're gonna have a little bit of a surface low that develops here, and that helps to pull that moisture northward to intersect with that cold front that we see kind of crashing down here. And so particularly what we're looking at here is, again, this would be, let's move to say about 19. So this would be 2 p.m. Central Time here on Friday. What we can see is we have this, you know, big moisture plume here, these 60 degree dew points here, We've got a little bit of kind of a surface low that's setting up right here. Cold front back behind here. We've got kind of this dry line setting up here with winds out of the west here. And then we've got this moisture that's being pulled up from the south and from the southeast here. And it's going to create this focus and this area of convergence where we've got winds kind of coming together. That's going to be more than enough to not only not have an issue with the cap, but cause enough of that forcing to get that air to rise quickly and cause those significant uh, thunderstorms. Um, so we're not gonna have any issues there. And that's one reason why we're likely to see more than just a couple storms, but much more of a you know wide outbreak of lots of different storms and, and supercells that will have severe weather risk. I think we can see this best on the temperature map here. Again, this lo is looking at 2 p.m. These little barbs here are the simulated wind direction here. So we can see again behind the cold front kind of coming out of the north here, a little bit more out of the west right behind the dry line here. We're out of the south down here or southwest. Now almost the due south here and then almost kind of out of the south east or east here on this side of the surface. Zone. So all of these winds coming together is going to be more than enough to ignite storms right here. And so I think that's kind of what we're looking at um, with this setup here again, kind of the Metroplex southwest of the Metroplex to the Waco area, kind of along I-35, looks very likely. 
when we look at a couple of our um, severe weather parameters here, we always like to look at that instability. And we can see here these bright colors means that this is uncapped. So we're not going to have an issue with storms firing. And it kind of noses up here where that best moisture is. And we've got surface base cape of about 2,700 joules per kilogram. Certainly a pretty unstable atmosphere, very supportive of severe weather. Um, and then as we move forward, we see that become even a little bit more sufficient. And that is where we get these storms that will fire off here. So again, if we go back to um, kind of that 2 p.m. time frame right here, again, more than enough instability, we're, we're uncapped here. Another thing that we look at is what's the direction of those winds according to the boundary. So when we see our boundary is gonna be something like this and the wind barbs are moving almost parallel, that's gonna mean that these storms, at least initially, are going to be relatively isolated. It's not gonna be a, a big old line right at the beginning. Eventually they may all kind of congeal into a line, but they are gonna be more isolated, which increases the severe weather risk oftentimes with bigger hail and more of a tornado threat when we have isolated storms. So certainly looks like that might be possible here. Um, and then lastly, let's take a look at the kind of simulated radar and what we're expecting. So again, this gives us what the HRRR model is showing as of 19Z or 2 p.m. on Friday. We can see a lot of kind of convection, you know, rain, nothing severe up here across the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. And then we can see a little bit of this convergence really setting up kind of right in here at 2 p.m. is where these different wind directions kind of come together. And then let's see what happens when we move just one hour forward. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, we move just one hour forward here. Look where those storms ignite, kind of right over Fort Worth here, right along that boundary. Um, and then when we move forward in time even more, what we can see is we see even more of those cells pop up and definitely a significant one over the Metroplex. And then they start to form a little bit more of a line, but pop up almost all the way to the Mexico border here and to the Red River where that threat area is that was outlined here earlier. So could see significant storms. And then as we get into the evening overnight, they push east, probably more of a damaging wind threat as they move south and east. But we can see a couple significant storms popping up kind of right over that North Texas Metroplex area. This is just one model. This is the HRRR showing where those strongest storms will be. The other thing that we've looked at before are those updraft helicity swaths. Um, so again, if we look at a six hour depiction of that, let's let this load, we can see this model is picking up on that strongest storm moving over Fort Worth and kind of the southern part of the Metroplex being pretty, pretty intense here. Another one down by Waco, maybe a little bit one up here by the Red River. Now, when we do look at one of the other models that you can look at and we look at a similar view here, this doesn't show as much activity across the Metroplex, but does pick up on this cell kind of moving southeast over here around the Waco to Killeen area. So again, this gives us a little bit of an idea of the spread between models. And that's why no one model is going to nail everything at 100%. But this does give us an idea if two models are showing something between kind of Waco and Dallas-Fort Worth, that this north to north central Texas area is likely going to be where we see the strongest storms um, tomorrow again on Friday. So um, definitely stay weather aware tomorrow, be able to get watches and warnings um, and stay up, uh, up to date with the National Weather Service. They'll be posting more updates as we get a little bit closer, but definitely could see yet another round of severe weather Friday afternoon across much of uh, north central and central and eastern Texas. So certainly stay weather aware and hopefully that everyone has a good end to the work and school week and I'll see you back here for the next video.